Number 10. What if Chris Paul actually went to the Lakers? In December of 2011, the Lakers shocked the basketball world by making a trade for Chris Paul, which was going to pair him up with the still dominant and lethal Kobe Bryant to make the best bass court in the entire NBA. Just hours after the deal was supposedly done, the trade was nixed by the NBA for quote, basketball reasons. You see, the New Orleans Hornets and now New Orleans Pelicans are a unique NBA franchise in a sense that they are the only franchise in the league that is actually owned by the NBA itself and not just a single individual. Once Dell Demps, the GM of New Orleans, agreed to the deal, the other owners of the NBA threw a fit. According to then commissioner of the NBA, David Stern, Dell Demps was not authorized to make the deal. So Stern and the other owners voided the deal and Paul was ultimately dealt to the Clippers instead. Would Chris and Kobe have actually won titles together? The Lakers still would have dealt Andrew Bynum for Dwight Howard. What would the team have looked like with Dwight and Paul playing the pick and roll while Kobe lurks on the perimeter? Does Kobe even tear his Achilles if he has Chris Paul to lean on at the point guard spot and doesn't have to play an insane amount of minutes just to earn a playoff spot? Number 9. What if Grant Hill and Penny Hardaway stayed healthy? In a 1996 interview, Michael Jordan was asked who he sees as the next Michael Jordan, the guy he would eventually pass the torch to when he inevitably retires. Michael said two players, Grant Hill and Penny Hardaway. Now, Penny was often compared to Magic Johnson more than Michael Jordan. Before Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant, Penny Hardaway was the feared wing player alongside of Shaquille O'Neal. He was a large point guard, standing 6 foot 7 inches, and only his second year in the league, he helped lead his team to 57 wins and a trip to the NBA Finals while averaging 20.9 points per game, 7.2 assists per game, 4.4 rebounds, and 1.7 steals per game. Unfortunately, Penny had the curse of bad knees and had his first major knee surgery in 1997. Several surgeries and teams later, Penny was merely a shell of what he used to be in his Orlando days, and sadly, basketball fans never got to see his full potential. Grant Hill had a similar story. Before Kobe came onto the scene and was being called the next Michael Jordan, that title was often given to Grant Hill. In only his second year, he led the NBA in all-star votes, edging the likes of Michael Jordan. Hill averaged 21.4 points, 9 rebounds, 7.3 assists, and 1.8 steals per game, while also leading the league in triple doubles. And again, this was only his second season in the NBA. Grant had his first major ankle injury in the 1999-2000 season. After his first six seasons of his career, before his ankle injury, Hill had a total of 9,393 points, 3,417 rebounds, 2,720 assists. Oscar Robertson, Larry Bird, LeBron James are the only three players in league history to eclipse these numbers after their first six seasons in the league. As his career progressed, Grant continued to have reoccurring ankle injuries, and sadly, he never met his full potential either. Number 8. What if Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady stayed together? Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady started their careers together with the Raptors. They had a short tenure together in Toronto, though. At the time, Carter was already in the discussions for the best wing players in the entire league, while Tracy was seen as a quality sixth man with lots of potential. After getting bounced in the first round of the 2000 NBA playoffs, McGrady left the Raptors to head to his home state of Florida to join the Orlando Magic, signing a six-year, $67.5 million contract. It was then that Tracy's career absolutely took off, winning the league's most improved player award while averaging 26.8 points per game, 7.5 rebounds, and 4.6 assists per game. Only about a year ago, Tracy McGrady said he regretted leaving the Raptors for Orlando, wondering what the two dynamic players could have accomplished together. One man who believes they could have accomplished a lot was none other than five-time champion Kobe Bryant, who said, with McGrady and Carter and their numerous vets on the team, if they had stuck together, they could have won championships. That's an incredible statement coming from Kobe, especially when you consider that those years would have overlapped with the years Kobe and Shaq were winning their first three NBA championships. Sadly, we'll never know for sure what T-Mac and Vince could have accomplished together. Number 7. What if James Harden wasn't traded from OKC? 
This one is going to continue to climb the list of NBA what ifs as time goes on and Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and James Harden continue to make history and further their legacies. It was October 2012 and one of the dumbest moves in NBA history. The Oklahoma City Thunder traded the sixth man of the year, James Harden, to the Houston Rockets after failing to reach a contract extension with Harden. Harden was seeking a four-year, $60 million contract from OKC, but OKC was only willing to offer a $55.5 million deal. That's right, the Thunder decided not to commit to James Harden and instead trade him because they didn't want to pay him a little over an extra million dollars a year. They decided to break up a team that had taken a trip to the NBA Finals with their three main stars who were 22 years old, 22 years old, and 21 years old. Now Harden, Durant, and Westbrook are all in the prime of their careers and are each putting up historic numbers. You can make a worthy argument that the top three players in today's game not named LeBron James were all at one point on the same team. I honestly think it's safe to say that if OKC management hadn't shot themselves in the foot and traded Harden, we would likely be witnessing an OKC dynasty this very day. Number 6. What if Carmelo Anthony was drafted by the Pistons? The 2003 NBA draft was one of the greatest drafts in the league's history. The first five picks were LeBron James, Darko Milicic, Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. Talk about the case of one of these things is not like the others. LeBron was a shoe in number one pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers heading into this draft. Carmelo Anthony was seen by many analysts and experts as the second best player in the draft, but the second pick belonged to the already contending Detroit Pistons who had several wing players already and had more of a need for a big man. You know the rest. The Detroit Pistons selected the Serbian bust Darko Milicic and the following three picks were future NBA Hall of Famers. The part that makes this whole thing really interesting is that despite the fact that the Pistons passed on Carmelo and selected Darko Milicic, the bust, they still went on to win the NBA championship that season. Now imagine if they had selected Carmelo. Not only is Carmelo one of the best scorers this league has ever seen, but now he is an NBA champion. How would the legacy and perception of Carmelo change if you add a ring or a few to his resume? How dominant would the Pistons have been if you had lined him up with Ben Wallace, Chauncey Billups, and Richard Hamilton? Number 5. What if Michael Jordan was drafted by the Blazers? Coming in at the number 5 spot is the biggest draft mistake of all time. At the 1984 draft, the Houston Rockets started the draft by selecting Hakeem Olajuwon. No, that was not the mistake. Even though Houston passed on selecting Jordan, it's hard to criticize a team when they selected one of the greatest centers of all time and won two championships with the guy. No, the mistake was the very next pick, when the Blazers selected Kentucky big man Sam Bowie at number 2. Michael Jordan was the next pick, selected third by the Chicago Bulls. The Trailblazers passed on Jordan since they were already covered at shooting guard with their star Clyde Drexler. Bowie's career was ruined by injuries to his legs and feet and ended up being one of the biggest busts the game has ever seen. Michael Jordan simply went on to be the consensus greatest player ever. This was yet another prime example of why you should draft the best player available and not based on your team needs. There really isn't too much else that needs to be said about this what if. If Jordan had been drafted by the Blazers, the duo of Drexler and Jordan in the Western Conference would have likely ruined title runs for the Los Angeles Lakers and would have completely changed basketball history as we know it. Number 4. What if Michael Jordan never retired to play baseball? In the 1993 season, Jordan was on top of the basketball world, having just won his third straight NBA championship, and at 30 years old in the prime of his career, Michael Jordan shocked the world by announcing his retirement from the NBA. Michael then went on to play his first love, baseball. Having a lackluster career in the minor leagues before eventually returning to the Chicago Bulls with only 17 games left in the 1995 regular season. 
Many believed Jordan appeared to be rusty when the Bulls were later eliminated in the second round of the playoffs by Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway of the Orlando Magic. Later in June of 1995, the Houston Rockets defeated the Magic to win their second straight NBA championship. But what if Michael never left the Bulls in 93? In 1994, the year Jordan missed completely, the Bulls were able to push the Knicks to a Game 7 in the second round without Jordan. It's not far-fetched to think the Bulls would have likely been good enough to win that championship in 1994 had Jordan still been with them. And what about 1995? With Jordan in tip-top basketball shape and no signs of rust, maybe the Orlando series might have gone differently and the Bulls go on to win that championship as well. It's possible that if Jordan never left the game, the Bulls might have gone on to win an incredible eight straight championships. We'll never know for sure. Instead, Hakeem Olajuwon of the Houston Rockets has the two championships he so greatly deserves in the center of the Jordan era. Number three. What if Derrick Rose never got injured? Coming in at the third spot of this list is one of the most tragic injury stories in NBA history. In the 2011 NBA season, Derrick Rose was at the center of the basketball spotlight, winning the NBA Most Valuable Player Award and being the youngest player to ever do it at just 22 years old. He averaged 25 points per game, 7.7 .7 assists per game, and 4.1 rebounds per game, and the Chicago Bulls won 62 games, finishing with the best record in the Eastern Conference that season. The future looked bright for young Derek, who looks as if he was destined to be one of the all-time greats and a rival to LeBron James in the Eastern Conference for years to come. For those of you who weren't closely watching at that time, Derrick Rose had Russell Westbrook type explosiveness combined with John Wall speed and man could he finish at the rim. It was just one year later in game one of the first round of the NBA playoffs, Derrick attacked the basket, made a hop step move that we had seen him make so many times in his young career and he tore his ACL. His career was changed forever. Although Derek would eventually return to the floor and is still playing in NBA basketball today, injuries have continued to plague him, and he has never since been able to replicate his MVP form that we saw in his early years of his career. Number 2. What if Shaq and Kobe stayed together? This one probably comes as no surprise to any of you. Shaq and Kobe, one of the most dominant duos the league has ever seen. Also two of the biggest alpha males the league has ever seen. Back when Shaq and Kobe split ways, a popular argument was who was to blame for their split, Shaq or Kobe. But now in hindsight, I think it's pretty clear to see that in reality, it was both. Both players had an incredible ego that was through the roof. Is it Shaq's team? Is it Kobe's team? These narratives mattered greatly to the two. Even the star's personalities were extremely different. Kobe was this serious, hard-working, closed-off lone wolf. Shaq, on the other hand, was a fun, playful leader who famously showed up to training camp overweight in 2004, which also famously infuriated Kobe Bryant. It all came crashing down at the end of the 2004 season. The Lakers were considered overwhelming favorites over the Detroit Pistons in the NBA Finals, but the Lakers were upset four games to one. With Kobe's free agency underway that offseason, Lakers management had a decision to make. Keep Kobe or Shaq. They committed to the younger star and signed Kobe to a massive contract while trading Shaquille O'Neal to the Miami Heat. Both players continued to be elite years afterwards. Shaq won a championship with Dwayne Wade in Miami and Kobe won two more in Los Angeles. But what could the two have done if they had put their differences aside and stayed together? How many more championships would they have won? After all, Kobe's prime years of his career were with Kwame Brown on his team. How different would that have been if that was Shaq? And number one, what if Len Bias lived? To me, this story is definitely the greatest what if in NBA history, partially because of the mystery of it, but also because of the level of impact it could have had on the NBA as we know it. Len Bias was a 6'9 forward from the University of Maryland who had incredible athletic abilities along with a smooth jump shot. Len Bias was a college star. He had epic battles with Michael Jordan while he was in North Carolina and was seen as a player of Michael Jordan's caliber. 
Meanwhile, in the NBA, Magic Johnson's Lakers and Larry Bird's Celtics were the premier teams in the league. The Celtics went on to win the 1986 NBA championships with their stars Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish. That 86 Celtics team is still considered one of the greatest teams in NBA history. Fast forward to the NBA draft, and thanks to a trade a couple years earlier with the Seattle Supersonics, the Boston Celtics owned the second overall pick in the draft the same year they won the NBA championship. Cleveland had the first pick and needed a big man, so they selected future All-Star center Brad Doherty. With their second pick, the Boston Celtics selected their exciting forward of the future, Len Bias. Len, the man who many were saying was going to rival Michael Jordan for years to come, was now joining Larry Bird and the already all-time great Boston Celtics squad. But then, less than 48 hours later, while he was in his college dorm room celebrating with his friends, Len Bias had a seizure and collapsed. Soon after medical attention arrived, Bias was pronounced dead at 22 years old. It was simply a cocaine overdose, making Len Bias the poster child of the NBA's terrible cocaine issues in the 1980s. This tragedy left the school, his family, and the Celtics organization devastated, and the rest was history. So what if? What if the man who was compared to Michael Jordan would have lived and joined an already stacked Celtics team? Do Magic Johnson and the Lakers win their championships in 87 and 88? Do the Pistons win their championships in 89 and 90? When Bias reached the prime of his career, is he battling Jordan in the 90s and preventing MJ from winning his famous six titles? Would Michael Jordan be considered the greatest of all time if he had less titles? How would that have influenced Kobe, LeBron, and other greats who grew up idolizing Jordan? As you're watching this video, would you be wearing biases right now instead of Jordan's? This one what if could have changed everything. Thanks for watching my video guys. Let me know in the comment section what you think is the biggest what if in NBA history. I want to give a big shout out to Dom2K, Mike Corsemba, and Nick Smith. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have taken my love of basketball to YouTube. My name is Johnny Arnett and this is my new YouTube channel where we're going to be talking about basketball history, general basketball discussion as we look forward to the next NBA season. If you like this video and would like more content, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. That's it for me. Till next time.